Hi everyone. I know it's been a while. We've been really, really busy, but a couple of things today I just wanted to share with you. Uh, we're doing a condition inspection on RV7 that we haven't seen before. And again, we're seeing some things that are repetitive. So I know it's out there in the rest of the fleet. So part of today is just kind of sharing with you. Pay attention, okay? We keep talking about the air boxes. Here's the air box that sits right underneath the engine and your air filter goes in there, okay? Now I know on the KNN box, it says lifetime. It's not lifetime in the airplane, right? We've talked about this many times before. What happens is these filters, they get hard. This one's really hard, so I'm pushing on that. Compared, let me compare it here to a new one for you. You can see how much easier, how much more flexible this new one is, okay? And then what happens when they get hard and they shrink, especially in height, they usually do it together. What it will do, it'll sit there inside this fiberglass air box. Can you get a good picture of that, Darian? Yeah. And it just, it just augers a hole in it. So you can see we've just about cut through this air box here on this one. So, you know, for those of you doing your own maintenance or having A&Ps do maintenance on your RVs, I would tell you, <laughs> sorry, but you need to get the maintenance book. Right, you got to pay attention to this stuff because the last thing you want is this thing falling out and causing a problem. So, what are we going to do to fix that? Is it salvageable? Yes, many of you have probably seen this before. We're going to cut a nice aluminum plate, we're going to install it in there with some Pro Seal, and then the air filter will ride very nicely on this aluminum plate and it will no longer impact or have a problem there on the air box. Okay. So again, please pay attention to your air filters when you're doing the condition inspections. Make sure your A&P checks them for those of you who are non-builder owners and having somebody else do it. The other thing I want to show you here, that's another common repetitive problem. We hear a lot of, hey, I got high CHTs, and we sometimes chalk it up to a newly overhauled engine. In this case, this is a newly overhauled engine, I don't know, maybe 20, 40 hours on it. And so, you know, part of the condition inspection is we're going to check ignition timing as well. But right here, I want to show you, and you'll hear it. Did we leave this on? Yes. So look down here. This is where you check your timing. We're on top dead center of number one cylinder. And see the little starter hole right back here? As I come up on 25 degrees before top dead center is where we want the magneto to fire. If you hear it there, if I'm quiet. I'm going to move it so they can hear the audio. There is the right mag coming up, and you can see it's firing probably 27 to 28 degrees because there's the 25 degree mark. Now listen as I slowly come up some more. The left mag is firing pretty close to 25, right? That looked good in there, Darian? Okay, so what we're going to end up doing is adjusting the right magneto here for 25 degrees, but having a magneto timing two degrees, three degrees advance like that will definitely cause high CHTs. So we're going to fix that timing. By the way, that's somewhat calm. Seems like on these slick mags, whether you do the 500 hour service bulletin or a newly overhauled engine, uh, they tend to, for some reason, the timing seems to advance within a year, a couple, three degrees. So you do want to check those. Just don't assume they're right. Okay. Talk to you next week. Next week.